Hey YouTube friends and welcome back. Uh, this is video number five. Uh, thanks for following. Uh, hope you're enjoying the series so far. Uh, anyways, we're getting up to the good stuff now. Uh, we're gonna today we're gonna install uh, Windows Server onto our first node. Uh, so that's the project today. Anyways, uh, so we're gonna go through the steps of uh, how we're gonna get Windows and how to get it our our media that we're gonna use to uh, put it on to our servers and stuff like that so we're gonna do all the steps so uh, this series is gonna cover all the steps so maybe you don't need every little step so <clears throat> anyways uh, we're gonna get started here I'm not gonna talk too long in front of the camera today uh, we're just gonna go right down to the computer and just get started right away so let's go over there and let's get started Okay guys, so here we are at our workstation here, so let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need is uh, we're going to need Windows Server. So let's go and get that. So we're going to get Windows Server for free because we're going to become Windows Insiders. So we're going to look, look for Windows Server 2019 Insider. Bam. And then see right there, download Windows Server Insider Preview. So that's what you're going to need right there. So when you click on it, it's going to take you to a page where it's going to tell you to log in. So you're going to need to log in with your Microsoft account. See right now, it's yeah, exactly. It, it says you need to be a member. So the first thing you need to do is you log in. And once you're logged in, uh, at first it might not actually let you download right away because you need to actually uh, become a, a member of the insider program but it's really easy all you have to do is just fill out a couple things and click OK and you're accepted right away and then as soon as you're accepted you're able to come back to this downloads page and you're gonna want to download this Windows Server VNet previews here and make sure that you download the right one the one that you want is this one, the LTSC, because the other ones are, uh, there's no desktop on them. So you want this one right here, this ISO right there. Well, that's this version right now, that's out right now. So you're going to go ahead and select that, hit confirm. Uh, select English, hit confirm. And then if you get an error here, actually, it could be because you're using like Chrome or something. So make sure you use like uh, Internet Explorer if it's not working. Okay, so download. See, there's your link. So we're going to download it. It's downloading the ISO. It's 4 gigs. All right, so let's wait for that to finish. Okay, so I didn't want to wait the time that I was going to take to download. And lucky for us, I already had a copy of it, so I'm just moving it over to the, to the downloads folder. So here we go, we got the, the download version of the Windows Insider Preview, which is the same one there. Uh, see, I already had it downloaded. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a little USB, and we're going to stick that into our computer. And we're gonna use a, a program called Rufus to uh, to uh, burn this ISO that we just downloaded onto the USB. So we're gonna go to Rufus, and it's gonna be the first one right there. Create bootable USB drive. Scroll down a little bit. It's one of these downloads right here, right here. Rufus 3.3. So you want to click on that, download it. It takes about a second to download. And then you click on it to open it. Say yes. No. Okay, so here's Rufus and it's telling us that there's a device. Make sure that you pick the right one already. But usually it picks the, the one that you just put in. If you only have one USB in there, it'll pick it automatically. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you gotta click on this select button here to select the ISO that we want. And our ISO is in download. So right here, download Windows Insider. Okay, so select that one, and it's a standard Windows installation, and uh, we're going to want to not create this GPT partition, but we're going to want to create a, a master boots record partition, uh, so it's going to have a target bi BIOS 
or UF, UEFI. So that's what we need right here. This is the one that you want. So it boots up on its own. Uh, you can call it something else if you want. Uh, make sure that this is on NTFC and not FAT32. If it's on FAT32, it's wrong. And then hit start. And uh, that will actually take uh, a few minutes to do on your USB. It takes about 45 minutes to do on my computer at home because of the USB speed. So we're going to hit start and let that go ahead and make sure that you have uh, nothing important on that USB because everything will be erased. And uh, I'll see you when this is done. Alright, so let's say that now uh, Rufus is done copying here, so uh, your USB is burnt, so we're going to grab that and uh, we're going to go uh, visit our first node. So my first node is downstairs, so we're going to leave the work stop, uh, workstation here and uh, go downstairs. Okay, so we're downstairs here at the first node and uh, we're going to plug in our USB into the back. And we're gonna fire our first node up and we're gonna get Windows Server 2019 installed. Okay, so when we first fire our node up, we're gonna wanna throw a BIOS right away. And usually that's by entering uh, delete or something like that. It usually tells you on the front on the screen. So yeah, hit delete for mine. <coughs> Okay, so BIOS screen, uh, as you can tell this one is different than the, the Node 2 that we were looking at the other day. Uh, one of the things that I, I recommend doing right away is you should probably do a, an internet upgrade on your BIOS if you can. Uh, this one does an automatic internet upgrade, which is really nice. And uh, I did it earlier actually and there was an update for my BIOS. so. It uh, automatically updated, so might as well keep it up to date. That's the first thing you want to do. Uh, second thing you want to do is go to your storage controller and make sure that you have ASCSI mode or AHCI. I mean, uh, that's the mode that you need, not not IDE or uh, RAID. You don't want RAID either. Uh, and then <clears throat> we're gonna want over to go to our boot options and. We're going to want to change our boot order or our boot options and make sure that our first boot is the one that we burned earlier. So mine would be the verbatim store and go, which is my USB. Uh, and I'm going to choose the UEFI version uh, partition one. So I'm going to choose that one as my boot option one. <clears throat> so now that it's boot option one, I hope you can see on there. Okay, so it's boot option one. Uh, what else can we do in here before? Uh, nothing else. So we're good. We're good to go here. Okay, so we're gonna save and exit. Then when it, when it restarts, make sure that you uh, press the key in time. <coughs> I didn't need to press the key, it just started right away. Awesome. Alright, so it's gonna load up. And these Ryzen 7s are fairly fast. So it loads fairly quick compared to uh, Windows 3.11. Yeah, that's that's yeah that's right, I'm old. Okay, so once it boots up to the nice little blue screen, we're going to select our time and currency. I usually change that to Canada because I'm from Canada. So, English Canada, next, install now. And uh, this is all pretty straightforward, just like Windows. There is one thing here that I wanted to mention. Uh, I'm going to put in no product key because we don't have a product key. So we'll put no product key. Make sure you put in the uh, data center with uh, the desktop experience. Make sure you pick that one. Hit next. I accept. Next. Custom. And now see I have a bunch, bunch of partitions here. 
I want to make sure that I delete every partition here because I, I don't, I'm starting fresh here and I want to make sure that my two drives, especially my two drives, don't have any partitions on it. And the one that I'm installing my uh, OS on, or my uh, operating system, uh, I want that to be fresh too. So I'm doing everything. I'm doing all the partitions on here so I have three fresh drives with nothing on them. Damn, all the partitions are gone, okay? So I'm gonna select my SSD, hard drive, my faster one from my OS. And hit next. And this is gonna take a little while, so I'm gonna pause the video now. Okay, so installation is now complete, and it's now at this screen, and this is where it restarted to. Asking you to put in a password for the administrator's account. Go ahead and put in the password. And it's going to finalize a few settings. This won't take too long. And there you go. So I'll control delete. And put in our password. And we're almost done this video here. I want to show you a few things that I'd like for you to set up on in here uh, before we uh, actually go to our workstation and uh, we can work from either our laptop and stuff so we don't have to stand at our, uh, at our data center. Alright, so there it is. And server manager is going to come up right away here. And it actually shows that I have no internet and this motherboard, uh, the ethernet port that comes on it, the drivers don't work in Windows Server. And I'm actually going to make a separate video, so the next video that I'm going to make is about how to uh, make the drivers for Windows Server work with this, uh, this type of uh, this chipset or whatever it's called for this uh, ethernet. Anyways, so uh, I don't need this pop up every time here, so I click this little button. And we're almost done here. Uh, what I, I need you to do is go to configure this local server and click on remote management or remote desktop because right now it's disabled. <coughs> and click on allow remote connections to this computer, hit OK and I unclick the second connect connection down below and I undo that and then hit apply and hit OK and then the other thing that you really need to do before we can move on to our workstation is get the IP and since uh, my Ethernet is not working right now I don't have an IP address but what you would normally have an IP address so you could run uh, CMD So run cmd and then type ipconfig and then right here you would have your IP address and then you need that IP address to be able to connect to your computer remotely from our laptop or from our workstation which we're going to be working from. So yeah this is the end of this video now that we have Windows Server 2019 installed onto our first node and uh, that we have the IP and that we turned on Windows desktop, ma uh, remote desktop so that we can manage this computer from somewhere else. And now that that's all done, uh, I'm gonna make another video about turning on the ethernet card for this, uh, this chipset. And uh, yes, you should actually now, you should, I'm not gonna make a separate video on how to install Windows uh, Server 2019 onto your second node. Uh, I'm sure you can do the same thing onto your second node. Uh, go into your BIOS and change the couple settings. Uh, so you go ahead and do that onto your second node. I'm gonna do that right now onto mine and I'll see you guys later.